So now let's switch gears here, and I will uh, take you through one more short case study. Uh, this case study, though, is going to emphasize uh, using gene signatures as opposed to looking at single genes. So we're going to focus on uh, gene signatures that are, re are representative of pathway activation. So uh, as you see, I'm uh, navigating in the tree here to uh, select, in, in particular, perturbation analyses. And so perturbation analyses are gene expression analyses in which a particular gene is perturbed, either by transfection or by uh, RNAi knockdown. So by clicking on perturbation analysis, I'm going to see the 89 analyses in Oncomine uh, that look at perturbations, and we're going to select one of them uh, for a gene signature analysis. So scrolling down this list, uh, you, you see we've got uh, a SOX4 transfection, we have estradiol uh, treatments, we have MYC transfection, et cetera. Uh, you could browse this list, or you could search for the particular analyses of interest. I'm going to look at uh, this RAS transfection analysis in the BUILD cell line study. So this is a, a study that many of you are probably familiar with. This is work by Joe Nevins in which a variety of oncogenes were transfected in human mammary epithelial cells relative to control. So here we're looking at this analysis, uh, HRAS transfected cell lines relative to control, and we're looking at the genes that are most significantly overexpressed in the HRAS transfected lines. We could just dig through this heat map to identify single gene markers of RAS pathway activation. But instead, what I'm going to do is what we call a concepts analysis. And uh, that's just like a, a, a gene signature analysis that you might have done in other tools. So what I'm going to do here is select this analysis for a concepts analysis. And I'm going to take the top 1% of genes most overexpressed by HRAS transfection and use that as what we call our primary concept or our query concept uh, for mapping to the Oncomine database. So now uh, you, we're, we're jumping into a different analysis mode. Uh, our query concept is this HRAS transfection signature, and we're asking the question, where in Oncomine do we see overexpression or coordinated expression of the HRAS transfection signature? Again, we uh, are, are come to a summary map where we have cancer types and analysis types. Also down below the summary map, we have other types of associations for a signature. So for example, we have 13 biological annotations that are associated with this RAS signature. We can simply click on that to, to see what those associations are. So for example, we have this strong hit between RAS pathway activation and chemotaxis genes. Note a number of chemokines here uh, that are overexpressed upon uh, RAS pathway activation. We also have a, a disproportionate number of genes involved in angiogenesis, genes with growth factor activity, et cetera. So this teaches us a bit about the types of genes, the pathways that are activated by uh, the RAS pathway. So let's jump back to the uh, summary and, and look at a couple of uh, Oncomine-related uh, questions about the RAS pathway. Again, notice that we have controls up here on the top. Uh, I'm going to up my odds ratio threshold uh, to pare down the number of results. You notice we had a, a great number of results at an odds ratio of 2. Odds ratio of 3, which basically means there's three times more genes overlapping our RAS signature and signatures in Oncomine. So as you can see, we have a number of cancer versus normal signatures showing uh, disproportionate overlap with our RAS signature, suggesting that the RAS pathway is active in those cancers. So for example, head and neck cancers, we have four independent studies suggesting that the RAS pathway is activated in squamous cell carcinomas of the tongue or head and neck squamous cell carcinomas. We can visualize this relationship. So now we're looking specifically at RAS pathway genes projected onto this tongue squamous cell carcinoma analysis. And you can see, comparing the squamous cell carcinomas in class 2 relative to the normal tongue samples in class 1, that the RAS pathway genes trend towards overexpression, really almost across the board. There's an occasional sample, like as evidenced by this blue stripe here, that doesn't look like it shows RAS pathway activation. But in general, most of these squamous cell carcinomas uh, of the tongue do. 
So let's jump back to our summary and make some more observations about the RAS pathway in cancer. If we want to look at particular molecular subtypes, we can see that we have some breast cancer molecular subtypes that are associated with activation of the RAS pathway, as evidenced by the red color. And we have other molecular subtypes that have relative underexpression of the RAS pathway. So let's click on the five here and learn about breast cancer molecular subtypes that overexpress the RAS pathway. So our first hit here is with breast cancers that are positive for EGFR by Western blot. And that makes sense that EGFR positive breast cancers would overexpress the RAS pathway. Our next four associations here are all from independent studies, and these are all triple negative breast cancer signatures. So ERB2, ER, and PR negative breast cancers overexpressing the RAS pathway. And again, that's something that's consistent with published literature, that this subpopulation of breast cancers disproportionately overexpresses the RAS MAP-K axis. And if we wanted to, again, uh, we could drill down and visualize this association simply by clicking the heat map. Let me jump back to the summary. We'll make a couple more observations, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, so looking down here at the pathway and drug associations, we see that the RAS pathway is linked to uh, drug sensitivity signatures, as evidenced by the, the red numbers here, as well as the RAS pathway is underexpressed in drug sensitivity analyses. Restated is linked to resistance to drug. So if we were interested uh, in drilling down, again, we could say, what drug sensitivity analyses is RAS pathway associated with? And we can see here from this analysis that uh, sensitivity to the APO2 trail, apoptosis ligands, uh, is associated with RAS pathway activity, as is sensitivity to a variety of targeted agents, like uh, the PD compound, the MEK inhibitor, as well as to uh, erlotinib sensitivity in uh, independent studies. So as you see here from this summary view, we started with this pathway activation signature. We can quickly learn about the biology of this signature of genes, cancer types where it's overexpressed, cancer subtypes where it's overexpressed, drug sensitivity associations, and other perturbations that are associated with RAS pathway activity. We can also look at uh, oncomine clusters telling us about uh, cancer types in which the RAS pathway is co-expressed. So I understand that's a whole uh, lot of information. What I wanted to get across was that with this gene signature analysis in uh, the oncomine concepts, uh, analysis. You can begin with a signature of interest and then identify the cancer types and subtypes and pathways related to that signature, making for a very powerful uh, analysis.